Now, when it comes to using event handlers, we talked about how to change content inside a website using events and how to prevent default events from happening if an element has a default event attached to it and how to run our own event instead. So what we're going to talk about in this episode is how to run multiple functions using just one event. Because using event handlers, we can't run multiple functions using one event. So we need to get around it in some sort of way. So I have two methods we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about one that is a little bit messy and one that you probably shouldn't be using too much in the future because it's just messy to look at. And then we have another one using event listeners. Now, the first method is going to be the one I'm going to show first. Again, there's nothing wrong with using this first method. It just looks a little bit messy when you use it. So looking at what I have in front of me here, you can see that I have sort of the same example as in the previous episode. I just simply have a box inside my website that when you scroll down, you can see there's a button we can click on. And when we click the button, it's going to change the button into yay or something else. And we do that using an event called unclick when we click the button. So this down here at the bottom is the event handler that fires this function when we interact with the button. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I would like to create a second function because I want to run two functions when I use one method. So I'm just going to duplicate it. I'm going to change the names of them. So I'm going to call the first one uh, first function. Again, just as a random name that I'm going to just come up with at the spot. Then I'm going to create the second one as second function. And I'm just going to go ahead and prevent the default behavior in one of them because you don't need to do it twice. So I'm just going to have it inside the first function up here. And again, we just want to lead the E inside uh, the parameters because we don't need that as well. And then I just simply want to change what the second function does. So in this example, we could, for example, say that I want to change maybe the styling of uh, the button. So I can say style dot uh, background color and set it equal to something like, let's say red. Now, if I were to go inside the website and actually run the function or run the event, you can see something peculiarly happens. And let's actually make sure we uh, do actually change this down here at the bottom as well. So I'm going to say I want to run the first button or the first function, and then I want to run the second function when this button is clicked. So if I were to actually run it, you can see that when I click it, we get sent back up to the top of the website, which is sort of weird because inside the first function we told to we told it to prevent the default event from happening that happened with a anchor tag as a default so why didn't that work well let's actually go ahead and scroll down to the bottom as you can see the background color changed but the text didn't change inside of here either so what we can get from this is that the first function up here didn't run but the second one did and the reason for that is that because event handlers can only run one function at a time it is going to overwrite the first function with the second function because the second function is the last one down here and this simply means that we can't run multiple functions so here comes a couple of different methods we can actually use to do this. The first method is if we were to just go and delete the unclick event, at least the second one, and create a third function up here. I'm going to call this one something like button click, just to have a name for it, parentheses, curly brackets. And inside this function here, I want to reference to the two functions we have on top of here. So what I want to do is I want to say, well, we have first function. So I'm going to just copy and paste that one. Then we have the second function. I'm just going to copy paste that one in as well. And again, we want to include semicolon at the end here so we don't mess anything up. Now the prevent default function we have inside the first function up here, we do actually need to move into the button click function. So I'm going to copy it, delete it, and again also delete the E from in here, and then do it inside the button click function instead. So what happens here is that we run this specific function instead of any of the functions we actually do want to do something inside the website, which means that when we run this one function here, it is going to fire off the other two functions. Again, we're using a function to activate two other functions, which is a little bit messy, but it works. So let's go inside the website and test it out. 
And as you can see, when I go down to the bottom of the website, click it, we don't scroll back up to the top because the first function was activated. And then we ran the other two functions using the first function. So we could actually change the button down there. Now, this is quite a messy way to do it because we have more functions that we really need to have inside our code. So instead, we're going to use the second method, which is using event listeners. Now, an event listener actually waits to see if there's any more events that needs to run before it actually executes the event. So event listeners is a great way for us to do it instead of using event handlers, which is the one that we have uh, down here. Okay, so I went ahead and included the prevent default function again because we need to use it for the next example. Uh, what we need to do here is we need to change the event handle into a event listener. Now the way we're going to do that is by going in and we're going to delete uh, the event handler part of it. So we're just going to reference to the button. And what we need to do instead is we need to convert this into a event listener by including a simple function called add event listener. Like so parentheses, semicolon. What we can do here then is that we can add a couple of different parameters inside the event listener. Now it is possible to add three different parameters inside this function here, but it's only two of them that are actually required. The third one is optional, so we're not going to talk about that one in this episode since it's we're getting into some more complicated things here that I don't want to talk about just quite yet. Uh, so we're just going to focus on the two first parameters that are actually required. The first one is going to be what type of event do we actually want to listen for inside the website. So in this case here, I want to listen for a click event, meaning that when somebody goes in and clicks the button, then something needs to happen using this event listener here. Then the second parameter is going to be what acts need to happen, meaning we're going to reference to one of the functions that we have up here. So I'm going to just go ahead and reference to the first function. So I'm going to take it, paste it in like so. But just like before with the event handler, we don't actually include the parentheses. And the reason for that is that if we include parentheses, then when the script gets loaded inside the website for the first time, it is going to actually run the functions that are referred to inside of here. So we want to make sure that we don't have parentheses afterwards. And that is going to be an issue later on because how do we pass parameters into the function then, which we'll get to at the end here. So for now, we're going to just tell it what kind of event we want to listen for and what do we want to run when we do actually uh, click the button or listen for the event that needs to happen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a second event, event listener right underneath here. I'm going to send in the second function that we have, and then I'm just going to save this and I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the browser and see what happens then. So now if we were to go down to the bottom, click it, you can see that now we do actually have uh, two events happening at the same time. We changed the styling of the button and we changed the content inside the button. And we didn't refresh the browser, so the uh, prevent default did actually work in this case here. So as you can see, using event listeners is slightly different than using event handlers like we learned about two episodes ago, but it does provide us more control over what we're actually doing when it comes to using uh, events inside JavaScript. Now, I do want to show you something else when it comes to event listeners, because right now I showed you that we could simply reference to a function that we already created inside the code here. Let's actually go ahead and delete the first function and say that I want to, again, still use the second function that I want to execute when I click the button. But this time I'm going to include the function directly inside the event listener. So what I can do is I can create a anonymous function. So I can say function parentheses, curly brackets, and then I can simply create whatever code I want to inside this function here. So if I want to console log something, console actually, no, let's actually go ahead and do the same thing as we did before. I want to grab the button, then I want to style it. Then I want to style the background color. And I want to set it equal to something specific, semicolon. I'm just gonna go ahead and change it to blue this time, just so we can see that it is actually something different that's happening. So if I were to go ahead and save this, go inside the website, refresh, click the button, you can now see we do the exact same thing, but we ran a function directly inside the event listener. Another way I would probably prefer that you write it because it's a little bit easier to look at is that we actually go ahead and put it down on different lines like this. So you actually have the JavaScript code on one line or multiple lines. We can actually continue. We could also console log here if we wanted to. You get what I mean. But in this way, the actual event listener is starting up here. 
and then we close it off down at the bottom here. And it is important to remember all the different parentheses and curly brackets and that sort of thing because it can get lost on you when you start creating all these different symbols. So do actually keep in mind that you need to have all the different uh, symbols. Now, like I mentioned before, in some cases, we do actually want to pass in parameters ourselves into the function that actually get run when we run the event inside the website. And right now, it's a little bit difficult to do that because if we were to take the first example up here, you can see that we're not allowed to add parentheses behind it. So how are we supposed to pass in, you know, some kind of data inside the parentheses like we would just by passing regular data into a function. Now, we need to do this using anonymous functions as well. So let's pretend for a second that I want to run this specific function up here, just like I do right here. I keep deleting my parentheses by accident. Um, but I want to pass in some information as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run a anonymous function again. I'm going to say function parentheses. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure the code looks nice, just like with the other event handler we have below here. So I'm just going to paste it down in separate lines. And then what I want to do is I want to run the actual function that needs to get run once we click the button. The way we're going to do that is by taking the function name from up here and then copy it and paste it inside the anonymous function we have down here. Now, the reason we can add parentheses behind the actual function name is because right now we have the function inside an anonymous function. So it's not going to run this function immediately when the website gets loaded inside the browser. Now, the next thing we're going to do it might seem a little bit weird to you. So I'm going to try and explain it as well as I can uh, for you not to get confused by what we're about to do here. Now, remember, we do have a default event attached to the anchor tag, which is the button that we click on, which causes us to scroll back up to the top of the website. And we need to make sure we prevent that default behavior from happening. Before, when we talked about event handlers, we used this specific uh, method up here where we simply refer to the event that was attached to the button that the event handler was connected to. And then we passed that event into the function and ran a, another function called prevent default, which prevented the default behavior from happening. Now, because this function up here now is separate from the event listener down here, we need to make sure we connect the E from inside these parentheses up here inside the actual function to the button that the event listener is connected to because right now those two are not connected. So the way we're going to do that is by making sure that right now inside the event listener that we're referring to the button that we also pass in the event from the button into the anonymous function to start with like so. Otherwise, the event that is default on the button doesn't get passed into this first function down here. So this is something we need to do. We need to make sure that we have this E inside uh, the anonymous function. So now that we did this, we can actually go ahead and add our own parameters inside uh, what we're doing here. Now, just to test this out inside the browser, if we were to save it, go inside the browser and refresh, you can see that when I click it, everything works like it should inside the code. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and run my own default uh, parameters inside uh, the function up here. So what I can simply do is I can go inside the first function inside the event listener, say comma, then I can include something like, let's say Daniel, which is just a string. And then I can go inside the first function up here and say we have a second parameter. I'm just gonna call something like name, just to have something. And then I want to refer to name inside the function here. So I can just say name, down here and when I go inside the website, refresh it, click the button, you can see that we now have Daniel inside the button. Well, maybe you can't see it because the blue is kind of dark. So let's go ahead and change this to uh, yellow instead. So I'm just going to go back in here, refresh. And as you can see, it now says Daniel inside the button. So this is how we pass parameters inside event listeners as well. Again, this is sort of a crash course in event listeners. You can do quite a bit more complicated stuff using event listeners. Um, so I kind of tried to take the basics of it, squeezed it into one episode with a lot of information in it. So if you don't remember everything from this episode, it's okay. Uh, I just recommend that you go through it again just so you catch on to what event listeners actually do because we do use them quite often inside JavaScript when it comes to the user interacting with our website. So that's all I had to say for today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope to see you in the next episode.